right, well, welcome to lecture two here. I'm sorry to have to do two lectures this week. I'm going to be talking about the, the three readings that you were doing for this week, which are Cabeza de Vaca, Thomas Harriet, and John Smith. There's some background information in the PowerPoint slides that you can also find in the introduction uh, to Cabeza de Vaca, the author introduction. He comes from a soldiering background. Um, he is part of a conquistador's expedition, uh, of course, in search of gold, in search of um, in search of riches, and things go pretty much horribly wrong, and he ends up uh, stranded and uh, captured uh, by Indians who who basically have him as a slave slash guest. It's really kind of um, you know he's he's not you know tied up. He's not. Uh, necessarily imprisoned, um, although there are times that he's sort of held. Uh, but for the most part, he basically works for them. And again, for the most part, he's pretty much free to go whenever he's he's ready to go. Um, so it's a strange kind of captivity, um, mainly based on hunger and, and deprivation. Uh, you know, he ends up he ends up wandering uh, over most of the American Southwest before he discovers a group of Spanish slavers uh, who quote unquote save him, um, and he really undergoes a, a pr- pretty dramatic conversion experience. Basically, going from being a, a Spanish soldier, mercenary, to becoming uh, something other, something different. Uh, uh, In a way, kind of the the first American. You know, he begins to see himself as something other than uh, a Spaniard. And, I mean, he's definitely something other than the natives. So um, he really is, in a lot of ways, sort of the the first American because of what he experiences. Um, He writes this story that you're going to read pieces and parts of um, basically as a way to communicate what he's done. I mean, he returns to Spain basically in chains. He's, he's imprisoned because his, his, he, he can't keep his thoughts to himself and his ideas to himself about how wrong it is what the Spanish are doing to the, the native population as far as enslaving them and sort of forcibly converting them, working them to death. Check out the film clip because it it gives you a little bit of a sense of what it might have been like, of what he experienced there. But because of his experiences, he doesn't see the the Indians as innately evil. Uh, he sees them as very human. He sees them as as really innately good and trusting. Uh, and we get a lot of description from him about how they live and how they live so close to one another and how much they give one another and end up giving him. Um, there's a lot of focus on, on living and dying. There's focus on families and how they interact. Uh, there's focus on uh, politics, inter, inter-tribal politics, and, and relations between various tribes. Um, one of the main things that, that we see over and over again is the theme of hunger and and deprivation. Um, I mean, basically, he walks across the Southwest naked, and in a lot of ways, this this is a metaphor too. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a conscious metaphor, but it comes through as a metaphor in the writing of how he experiences the new world. He's not clothed like the rest of the Spaniards are in armor, uh, in clothing. He, he basically travels naked, and he lives on the land and off the land, and he literally scrapes by. There's a, a very vivid scene where he's describing how he, how he ate well for a period because he was given the job of scraping off the animal skins, uh, which were going to be tanned, uh, and presumably made into leather. And he's there scraping the, the, the last of the meat off the skins, and he eats relatively well because of that. So you can imagine you know, how little they're eating and he's eating prickly pears and you know he's you know just sort of barely making it by sort of opens himself up in a way because of this deprivation that the Spanish don't and that the, that the other Spanish don't and that the Puritans don't and that John Smith doesn't. And so he has this in a lot of ways sort of a conversion experience because of the deprivation that he goes through. Um, it's also interesting to note how he focuses on the treatment of women and the treatment of children and how he sees that as very, very good and endearing and um, really speaks to the innate goodness of the Native Americans that he's encounter, he encounters. Uh, 
there's a bit of a focus on how the, the the natives see him. There's a little bit less in the reading that we have than there have been in in prior selections that I've used in 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 the course before. Uh, there are some sections in the reading that we have now though that do focus on how they bring people to him to be healed. It's uh, it's a theme that of course is repeated again in Thomas Harriet, Europeans as gods. Um, uh, but the, really, I think the important thing is the way that he looks at the, the Native Americans as a people who, he says, have the capacity for unlimited development. And this is what provokes in him the anger that he experiences that ends up getting him banished from the New World. I really want you to get a sort of an overall feel for Cabeza de Vaca's experience. And one of the things that really sets him apart from the Spaniards that he encounters. And he makes that very clear uh, in the near the end of the reading where um, the Indians are unwilling to let him go with the Spaniards because they see him as not of them. Uh, they see Cabeza de Vaca and his friends as other. They see him as being good where the Spanish slavers are bad, that he heals while they kill. And there's a very moving passage to that effect in the reading. Uh, and I hope you you know focus in on that. The significance of de Vaca, I think, can cannot be understated. Uh, he introduces some of the um, most persistent American myths, uh, First, the one of the noble savage, the idea that the Native Americans, the indigenous people, are innately good and innately strong and, and have compassion for one another and are not barbarians uh, necessarily just because of their uh, deprived state. They are, they are people, they're human beings, and as you say, have the capacity for unlimited development. Another American myth that he embodies is this idea of surviving hardship through faith, that he calls upon his faith. He calls upon his, 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 his religion um, and, and lessons from his religion that he reflects upon as he goes through these things and he makes connections back to. And this is something that's repeated again and again in American literature. Um, he's significant in terms of establishing an American identity, as I said at the first. In some ways, Cabeza de Vaca is the first real American because he he no longer sees himself as uh, as a Spaniard necessarily. He doesn't he doesn't identify that way, and neither and the Native Americans that are with him don't identify him that way either. He is really transformed by the experience. Um, and it's also in, in important in terms of introducing a genre of American literature, the captivity narrative, which uh, goes through with Mary Rowlandson, which we're going to read, with Frederick Douglass, and with many others that we're actually not going to read. And also the idea of the conversion narrative. You can see that as well in Rowlandson and Douglass, that the captivity narrative in a lot of ways parallels the idea of the conversion narrative, that you go through an experience and it changes you into someone new, someone better.